I got to take a break from the private lessons that go through next Tuesday um, and talk about this Saturday's day of Zoom because I don't want anyone misunderstanding. I'm breaking up this 24 limb pair mega system into three digestible parts. But the thing is, it's not even about you know what you'll see me do in the video. That's just a use of it. It's really about this. Uh, when you're studying, you take lessons, you practice, are you really practicing or are you just playing? In other words, there's a state of mind to get in where none of it does any good. Do you actually improve? Do I improve? It all depends on this relationship between the brain and the body. Otherwise, no matter what we're doing, even for me or anybody, it doesn't matter. You're just playing. Are you improving? That's what's going to be done Saturday in the day of Zoom. Be there. This is a special day of Zoom coming up on May 1st. What I've done is taken this mega 24 limb pair wiring system and broken it up into three segments because on one level it's extremely dense, very time consuming to, uh, to let your body get used to these things, but in theory it's a very simple thing to understand. So if you can even make one of the classes, you'll, you'll get the theory behind it. And you can also check out my cheap uh, coordination video on demand. It's like $1.66 a month for crying out loud. So you, you'll get the basic idea there. But uh, these classes get specific with each of the three modules in the brain for wiring the body to unlock an unlimited amount of possibilities. A lot of these possibilities don't necessarily sound great to most people. Musically speaking, some can sound like a science project, actually. But the things that you see me do here are just a display of what can be done. You know, if there's a radio station playing some music that we don't get, but we don't even have the radio to tune into it. There's no way we can assess it. And that's how the brain works with these rhythms. You can hear them, but unless you're processing them, it's just going to cause chaos, and that will be interpreted as, oh, it's not a musical thing. But to those that know it, it, it sure is, just like in other cultures with many odd rhythms and things that are normal because they're used to it and they learn it. So the point of this is uh, for me to take this mega system because it can reach things you, you could never dream of playing, but just because it can do that uh, doesn't mean you have to use it for that. You can just learn the basics of wiring your body properly and all the different connections and limb sets that, that work together. See, if you learn coordination properly, you don't hit microphones like that, right? <laughs> At any rate, uh, that's what this system is. It's a mega 24 limb pair monster. And I got to break it up. So uh, that's what's happening this Saturday at the May 1st day of Zoom. The most basic and easy limb pairing is the one we're most used to, which would be soloing with our hands while our feet keep in ostinato of sorts. The one that's most popular would be a samba, this one. Um, you know, a proper way to do that is to actually accent on the... And to try to do that accent while your hands are moving is even more difficult. What can happen is you can start to work your hands and it sort of sounds just square like... That's not necessarily the style of the music, but um, coordinating the hands still is easier than any other configuration um, out of 24 combinations where if you're a righty, your right leg is in the lead and you're leading with the right hand with your hands. That's only one of 24 possibilities. Anyway, it can sound like this.
So it's interesting because you start swinging. You're supposed to get a little sassiness to those uh, 16th notes on the snare. But when we're learning this kind of thing, you know, you have to learn it in a square way to start most of the time just to line up your limbs. At any rate, it's the easiest of all the limb pairs is that one. Reversing that to the um, feet, improvising while the hands keep an ostinato is an entirely different animal, except you can perceive it in a certain way where it becomes very learnable and natural at some point. But a quick demonstration of that would be uh, something like this. feet can express with different, you know, patterns and things like that, while the hands keep an ostinato. Now again, some of this doesn't float with everybody musically, but that's, that's not the point yet. The point is to be able to wire yourself so you can find a way and find ways to use it musically uh, and open up possibilities that never existed before with just the simple flipping of the hands against the feet versus the feet against the hands. But again, there's a protocol that uh, allows us to be something that doesn't take forever to learn. Another protocol for the multi-limb would be uh, vertical limb comparisons, meaning side versus side, left side versus the right side. Um, for a righty player, the most comfortable thing to do is to keep the left side maintaining an ostinato or a repeated pattern while the right side improvises. The reverse of that is uh, potentially deadly brutal. Deadly brutal, because it's, <laughs> it's something we're not used to doing. And uh, again, with the right approach, the right visual, the right protocol, it's doable. Without that, it's not doable, because we play where our senses aren't prioritized with the sight and the hearing and the touch the way they should be to allow these things. So someone that doesn't naturally, doesn't have to think about this, they know this innately, but maybe can't describe it because you can't, you don't have a monitor looking inside your brain to see which circuits are connecting, you know what I mean? But I've broken this down to find out how those thoughts are ordered, and that's why I can do what I can do and why I've been able to teach it to anybody, absolutely anybody that, that's come to me. So with, these, uh, with the classes, the vertical limbs especially, it, it deals with all the configurations, including this side-to-side -side thing. For a righty, the easiest side-to-side -side thing would be just the left side maintaining something that it doesn't have to worry about, like a, a triplet. This, like, this is really easy. At least sonically. It takes work to do it, but not as much, nearly as much as uh, some of the things that I can show you here. But anyway, the sound of that is, and you can see, it's the left side. So with that, that sounds palatable. That sounds, you can make that sound musical. When the patterns get more complex and polyrhythmic, it's just, again, it's like stuff sounds like a science project, you know, but that again, I, again and again and again, I repeat, it's not the point if it sounds like a science project to somebody because it's going to sound like that to most of the world because most of the world doesn't have that Brahmin area. Why it up? That's a scientific proof. It's not a taste thing. It's not musical to one, not to the other. It's like your radio station, you don't even have a radio to tune into the radio station. There's nothing, there's nothing to say about it. You can't even perceive it. So that's, this stuff gets like that. Music gets, or musical things get like that when the brain just can't 
process it. So you're learning a lot more than just being able to do it. And again, with no limits, because if, if you see this right, you don't have a limit to it except the amount of time that you put in and what you get your body used to. But there's a way to make that easier, 100%, and that's what I'm teaching. One example of a pattern getting really complex, but it doesn't sound so complex, but it's just wicked, is uh, one that I used in the Luna Park drum solo from the um, a Dramatic Turn of Events tour with Dream Theater, and that was a two hits with the left foot and three with the left hand. But I took that up a level by um, adding a unison hit, meaning bringing my hand off the hi-hat to the snare drum so that it, the, that side of my body actually made a whole cohesive beat. So now the right side of my body was free to express. The only problem is <laughs> doing it and expressing. Um, and as you can see in the video clip, there's some pretty crazy stuff like five patterns and 17 patterns and crazy large big odd rhythms that all that take a while to like turn around and some other complex stuff too as you listen check it out something as common sense simple as just flipping the pairing around for example if you're a righty Making the right side hold down the ostinato while the left side improvises which seems like, okay, just flip it around. But oh boy, oh no, 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 no. This is, uh, you know, th this is almost a separation point where, um, I, yeah, it's just a whole nother level to do that. Because you're not only used to, not used to the side by side thing, but definitely not used to making your weak side be your improvisational side and your um, strong side be in the ostinato side. In this example, I can display something pretty disastrously difficult to get together unless Unless you perceive it a certain way, then you can just go work on it and do it. As it's not a matter of just lining up the notes. Absolutely not. There's no way. Because our ears pick up certain things, and that's the end of it. The body will just fall to pieces, and that's the whole thing, is it's how the senses are ordered that allows you to flip pairs and do this. You know, it's, it's, there's something else. There's a protocol to it. But anyway, let me show you this. I'm taking a rudiment and splitting it um, between my right hand and right foot like this. I guess you can see it from overhead, right? So normally that's played with flams and not in unison, but I, I'm taking that and moving it to a more beat-oriented quote, musical environment like this. I'm also taking it up um, a level by adding a note. I'm, I'm sorry, by moving one of the notes from this sound to the snare drum sound. And it just might seem like a simple thing, just move it and hit it. But it's not, it affects the ears. And so when you go to improvise, it, it, things get wild. It's very difficult to manage, but let me hear, let me let you hear what that sounds like. So not only do you have the, the, the sound of the rudiment itself, but you've got a polyrhythm going within it, and it's just the right side. In other words, uh, here's the time, and you hear... That can really grab your ears and just, that's it, you're finished, done, all over, game over right there. Just leave. Um, <laughs> so it, that in and of itself is, is tough enough to get together, you know? Let me try that again. Played it right, but I heard a little glitch. I don't know what I hit.
So that one can be expanded like crazy. Um, it gets a little limiting sonically with what you can use for your left foot. But again, that's not the point of the courses is to play exactly what I'm playing. The point is to unlock the possibilities so you can use it how you hear it musically and even do the most basic things in songs that just tying your limbs together so you're in time. So learning these things isn't necessarily, again, for using them literally, as in most cases, that's just for our own enjoyment or for the enjoyment of us with our, with our drummer friends, which is why some of my drummer friends are my best friends that know about these things because we can share it. You know, you, you, you see in the same thing from the same angle. It's like having the same view of something, and you have that in common, and you can talk about it. You can't do that with everybody that doesn't have the same view. So it would be great. It would be great if most musicians actually had similar views, at least to know what each other was doing. You know, it would make for a lot, uh, a lot more commonality and then a lot more enjoyment of different different configurations that would normally not sound so palatable. Outer total uh, use of opposite muscle groups. Absolutely complete and 100% total. And I, I say that um, because of the diagonals are, are, are the ones that are, that are paired up, which is basically the left foot and the right hand make a pair of and the right foot and the left hand make a pair to be able to really navigate around this drum set. Again, you know, it's different. I started doing this in 19, or using it live in 1994, 95, with Extreme. I actually, I actually morphed into it while I was with Extreme between um, 94 and 95 and actually brought it, brought it out there because it took a long time behind the scenes to just make sure it was right, to get it together before I started making music with it. But one of the pieces of music that I made uh, with the simple use of the diagonals really was the song called Leave Me Alone, and the song was written around the beat, and it went like this. One, two, one, two, three. <laughs> That's a, what I think is a musical use of it. It's palatable. You don't even know what's going on back here, for crying out loud, right? But to actually record it and have the notes land where the notes are supposed to land so that when I'm stepping on a hi-hat, it's not stepped on late or early because it just doesn't work uh, when other musicians are lining up and are really tight like that. So that's just a simple a simple example of it, but it's not so simple just to get everything right and plus having, having hi-hats opening and closing at different times in the air means what are you balancing? Like I first started to learn this, I, had to, I felt myself doing this. Ah, you know? So a whole protocol had to be put in. And so the class with the, with the diagonals really is about strengthening our core and being able to navigate lifting different, you know, a different leg at a different time or both at the same time, but maybe not even closing at the same time and maybe they are landing at the same time. It, it all has its set of difficulties, but there's a protocol for perceiving it, seeing it, and when you get that visual on it, it's not difficult to get it. It's just difficult to go in a room for forever and bore yourself to do the exercises. I would rather have that than have no clue how to do it, right? But the, uh, the diagonal is, is really, for me, it's, it's come in handy just, again, for straight-up musical stuff like, I don't know, just hi-hat stepping. So 
<laughs> that's a basic use of it, right? Anyway, there are uh, uh, just insane levels of polyrhythmic stacking, pattern stacking, same rate stacking. Oh, my gosh. I mean, this whole thing gets crazy, but this is a whole other universe. This protocol, this learning of, of all of these possibilities in their reverse and the, the disastrous, the disastrously difficult um, uh, tasks that are ahead of us to do this are just impossible. If you, it's, it's, it's like having one door almost because you don't learn this just by, you know, like reading where the notes go and stepping on the thing and p stepping on the pedal and doing this and just going through it note by note. That is not what I, I, my, my course is about. My course is about really getting and perceiving that so you can, you know, pick a musical target and get to that musical state at some point. But unless you can perceive how to even do it, it's not even an option. It's not even something that's a possibility. So this is the nature of the system. It's just absolutely, it's, my, it's literally mind-blowing because it makes connections and it forces you to make connections. You can feel, you can feel them being made. And that's like that pain when you're, you know, in school and doing homework or whatever and like you, you, you just squint your eyes and you, you, you just grab your head. It's because it hurts. It actually hurts, you know, to learn. But... Hey, I can help you learn it easy. There you go. The end result is it's just a way to ensure that we wire up our limbs so that when we assign a task to them to hit in a certain place, that they indeed hit in that place. It, and this is anybody's choice musically how to, how, to, um, how to utilize this kind of a thing. But this whole thing is meant just to tie in the body in a basic way. It's not meant to play the insane, crazy, polyrhythmic, and physically difficult structures th that I'm showing. Because a lot of the stuff that I'm showing is still not as far as I can just sit here and do. Because these things have just opened them up. But the thing is, playing like that, I found that, especially at clinics, like kids just stare at me like, what are you playing? It sounds like a bunch of golf balls being thrown on the drums. Like, what is the point of that, right? It just, if it's not, quote, musical. But <laughs> the idea about that, if you, if, you, if you let science take over, like real science, not just someone's idea of science, but the actual science and all of the facts that have to do with it from everyone's opinion and everyone's angle, and you put that together, you get the same result, which is that the area of the brain that needs to be wired to perceive these things, if it's not wired, doesn't perceive any of them. So it can't even enjoy it. It can't even assess it musically. It just, it just doesn't process. So instead of someone saying, oh, that's, I don't like that, it's not musical, what they should be saying is, my brain is imploding right now, and I don't like that feeling. This is an uncomfortable, almost ugly, gross, difficult thing to deal with because my head actually hurts, you know? But that's not the fault of the musician. That's the fault of the person. And not even their fault that they don't know how to do it, but they can't even process it. So th this whole thing here is about sharing something that's extraordinary, that opens up uh, avenues to musical joy. You don't have to use it in crazy ways. You just you wire yourself up so you can just basically, and I mean basically, hit things where you mean them to be hit. But when we don't do that, it's because we're misfiring. So this system, even if you learn it in a basic way, even if it's a basic way, you are opening up those connections and soldering it together. And it's supposed to be done in a completely unmusical way, totally unmusical way. In fact, it's got to be done on musically. As if you're doing it musically, you're listening, you're actually reordering your senses to the point that you might as well be back in a position where you're never going to be able to learn any of this because you're approaching it backwards as far as the senses go. You never do this by ear. Never, ever, ever. That's the biggest mistake made by us all. We think we're supposed to learn by ear. You, you play. You're a musician by ear. 
It's got nothing to do with wiring up. In fact, you've got to ignore it or there's no way you can wire yourself up. So these mega systems are in basic terms are palatable. They relate to anybody out there could absolutely perceive what I am communicating. There's no question about it. Whether a person decides to take on the, the insane task or the commitment and has the courage to face trying to put some of these together is a whole different issue. Whether a person uses them in a certain way that's tasty, even to them or anyone else, is, is their choice. But my whole thing here is giving people a real choice. It's what real choice is about, is actually being able to choose, that you have the choice. That is what choice is all about, is when each individual actually gets a full-on choice. And you don't have that choice when you don't know what it is you're supposed to even choose or how anything works. So that's the power of the system. It's just extraordinary. It's worth checking out.